in holy baptism. David Michael was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all his sin. St. Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection life. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil day doers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all of the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will, I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, Seek my face. My heart says to you, Your face, Lord, do I seek. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. O you who have been my help, cast me not off. Forsake me not, O God of my salvation. For my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. Teach me your way, O Lord and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Give me not up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they breathe out violence. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and it will be forever. Amen. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit, let us pray. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to David and to all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from the prophet Isaiah. And in this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of choice pieces, a feast of wines on the leaves, of fat things full of marrow, of well-refined wines on the leaves. And he will destroy on this mountain the surface of the covering cast over all the people. 
the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. The rebuke of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. And it will be said in that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The epistle reading is from the first letter of the blessed St. Paul to the church at Corinth. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which you also received, and in which you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I deliver to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by over five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present, but some had fallen asleep. After that he was seen by James, then by all the apostles. Then last of all, he was seen by me also, as one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, who am not worthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. Now, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Yes, and we are found to be false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he did not raise up, if in fact the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then also they who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward those who are Christ's at his coming. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is the first
firstborn of the dead. To him be glory and power forever. Hallelujah. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory be to you, the Lord. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Truly, truly, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment, because he is the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. David Michael Ulm was born in Waterloo, Iowa on January 26, 1954, one of four children to Walter and Marlis Ulm. He was baptized into God's kingdom on February 21st of that year, and was confirmed in his baptismal faith on June 2nd, 1968. He attended the University of Tennessee at Martin, earning a bachelor's degree in biology and chemistry, which served him very well in his preparation to be a pastor. <laughs> he graduated from Concordia Theological Seminary, Fort Wayne, Indiana, on May 23, 1980. I was in his class. His service to the church began with the year of vicarage at Holy Cross Lutheran Church in Warren, Michigan, 1978-79. His first call was to St. John Lutheran Church in Albright, Michigan, where he was ordained June 29, 1980. Three and a half years later, he accepted the call here to Good Shepherd, where he served some 35 years before retiring. David and I were best friends for almost 45 years. We did everything that best friends do. We said things we shouldn't have said. We drank a little wine. We ate some rich food. We went on trips. You may not believe it, but I remember a couple of times on Long Beach Island off of New Jersey where David laid on the beach, baked red in the sun, as red as the color of the altar. And he ate for the whole rest of the time we were in New Jersey. We did all the touristy things you can do in Michigan. We went to every place in Detroit that is open, every large house. We love touring large houses, the Dodge House, Ford Houses. We visited every place that we could imagine upon visiting, including a number of trips to church supply stores in the region. When he was installed here, I preached for that installation. When I was installed in Clarksville, Tennessee, he preached for my installation. It must have been good sermons both times because each of us served, has served in that same parish ever since. David was the best kind of friend you could have. Sometimes months would pass and we would not speak on the phone. And then it would be as if we had never stopped speaking. And the conversation picked up right where it had ended. But he was terrible about 
answering his phone. When he finally did pick up, the conversation would go on for hours, but it was an effort to get him to go to that phone. He was addicted to movies and books and all things dark shadows. You know all of that. David was meticulous about planning, including this funeral. He hated being caught off guard. He hated being surprised. It was not that he had to be in control. It was that he insisted upon being prepared. How strange it is that he prepared for this day. But it has caught us off guard. And left us with a surprise that none of us wanted. Easter slipped by us this year. Maybe we didn't even notice it's coming and going, caught up in COVID-19 and all things coronavirus. We were restricted from our normal routines. We were kept from the usual liturgies of the church where God's people gathered to hear again of Christ crucified and risen. We were as surprised as perhaps the disciples were when Easter came and went. But that's how the victory of the Lord has always been. It's been hidden. Jesus' closest disciples stared into the darkness of the empty tomb with fear. Maybe they were reeling from the other surprise, the surprise of a cross raised up and their Lord's body hanging limp in death from it. And just maybe we are in the same place. It is hard to see victory now in David's life when so soon after his retirement he died. What happened to all of those golden years of self-indulgence that we all tell ourselves we will live to enjoy? To the world, then, David's death is cruel, an inexplicable tragedy. And maybe it may seem that way to us as well. David was not a perfect person, but he was a good and a faithful pastor. How sad it is, then, that for all his sacrifices and years of faithful service, he should die without having had a chance to live for himself instead of for others. At least that's how the world would see it. The world sees no victory in David's life, only loss. And so to the world, the lesson is plain. Do not live sacrificially. Do not serve others until you first get what you want. But that is the point. What David wanted was driven not by a sinful heart and delirious dreams of self-indulgence. What David wanted was placed in his heart when he was received into God's kingdom in baptism. The Holy Spirit was there. It, the Holy Spirit taught him to believe in what the Lord had done, to delight in his union with Christ's death and resurrection. There, in that baptismal womb, David was born again to the new and everlasting life that was already his in this mortal life, but not fully his, until finally he must surrender his body to the grave so that God might raise him up in glorious flesh, for the eternal life he has prepared. And now we come in our tears. But even in those tears, because we share this baptismal hope, even in those tears we have hope. We do not grieve as a people without hope. We grieve for David as a people who believe what Christ has said. It may seem that David's life hides nothing but loss, but hidden in that loss is Christ's eternal victory, forged for David, forged for you and me. And in this victory, sins are not simply forgiven, but sin itself is overcome forever. In this victory, death is not simply overcome, but it is erased from existence and replaced with life that death cannot touch. In this victory, life is not fragile, it is not weak, it is not temporary. Life is strong and mighty and everlasting. This is the life that God gave to David in his baptism. It was always there, though it could only be seen by faith. 
from his infant Christ to his tentative youth to his young adulthood to his maturity as a seasoned pastor and man of God. Eternal life has lived in David, just as John's gospel we heard today. Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me already has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but is passed from death to life. The world always wants to believe that those who die are in a better place, but the world has no idea where that better place is or how you might get there. It's not quite a faith or a belief, but more like a dream. That's not how it is for us. That's not how it was for David. But as St. Paul insists, if in fact Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, as a man death came, and so by a man the resurrection of the dead, then we have a future, and David has a future. And this resurrected life is not some virtual life, it's not some dream world that we hold on to, and it's not a spiritual life, the way the world uses that term. It is the most real life of all, because this life that God gives you can never be stained by sin, it can never be stolen by death, and it can never suffer temptation at the hands of darkness. Because nothing can stain it or compromise it or steal it from you. It is yours, the most real thing you will ever have. This is the life that David Michael Alm was given in baptism. And it is to this life that Pastor David Alm devoted his life and ministry for your sakes, for mine. This is the life that was the core of his preaching. In some respects, I would suggest that probably it would be hard-pressed for anybody to remember many of David's sermons. Not because they were bad, but because they were the solid food of the gospel. They weren't about flash, they weren't about eloquence, they were simply the truth of God's word spoken with conviction. It is this life that David distributed and his hands and the blessed Eucharist from this altar. And if you and I are to find consolation in our sorrows, if you and I are to find comfort, it will come from this cross where Christ died and from this resurrection where we saw the promise of our own joyful resurrection with him and those who we love who have died in faith. So dear friends, this is not the end. Nothing is over except the pain. Nothing is lost to David except with that which could never last. Nothing is given up except that which God will replace with glory beyond imagination. Nothing of sin will endure but only grace, mercy, salvation, and life. The things for which Christ lived and died and rose things that he bestowed upon his servant David, and that which is our faith and hope today. Though our joy is compromised by sorrow in this moment, nothing is compromising David's joy anymore. Every tear has been wiped from his eyes. The veil of sin and death have been lifted, and his place at the table of the marriage supper of the Lamb has been set with wide, well-refined, and well-marbled feet. And I can say, my friends, we have not heard the last of David Michael Paul. For truly the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. And on the day that God has appointed, the Lord will come in his glory. He will reach his hand into the dust of death, and he will raise up David and all the saints, that we might be one in his presence forevermore. And on that day, with David's voice joined to ours, we shall proclaim, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. 
So people loved by God, we believe this. Jesus, the Son of the Eternal Father, and Mary's flesh came into the world in order to fulfill all righteousness for you. To carry upon his shoulders the weight of your sin. To pay with his own blood the price of that sin. To die in your place the death that will set you free. When he broke the chains of death and surprised even his disciples with the power of his life, he became the pioneer, the scripture says, who forged through death the path that we too shall walk to everlasting life. He opened the Holy of Holies so that the altar might become a table where he will feed his people his flesh and blood. And he opened the grave so that those who die in him will live forever. By His power, the Spirit enkindles this faith in our hearts. He washes us clean in baptismal water. He absolves us of our sins. He guides us with the living voice of His Word. He feeds us the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. That where He is, we might be. Just as where we were, He came to be. This is our confidence. Barbara, Mark, Danny, nieces, nephews, grandnieces, grandnephews, your loss is great. But the gift of God is greater. Your hearts are wounded by grief, but God will heal them by grace. Though your eyes at this moment strain to see victory, through eyes of faith you shall see it. And though limits constrain us here on earth still, David is no more constrained by those limits. So we will stand at the grave and we will weep for a time, knowing that we will be separated him for a period. But we shall return with joy in the knowledge that we shall be together with him in everlasting life. And on that day we will say, O oh death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Last Sunday, the last hymn we sang on Pentecost in my parish, the last stanza of that hymn sung in the sanctuary, the last stanza of hymn 503. I thought about David. We sang, when we on that final journey go that Christ is for us preparing, we'll gather in song our hearts aglow, all joy in the heaven sharing, and walk in the light of God's own place, with angels his name.
God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption to be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give to the family of David and to all who mourn comfort in their grief and a sure confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to the bereaved, that within the communion of your church, they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the assurance of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for David, who faithfully shepherded your flock here on earth. Grant that we too may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our thanks for David and for all the blessings you bestowed on him in this earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home, that with him we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to life. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present, nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
him shall be condemned. In the same way also 
took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new testament in my blood which is shed for you for the remission of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Father, we now do celebrate this memorial of our, of our Savior's passion and our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent into hell, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering you praise and thanksgiving for the gifts you have given us, we bless your holy name. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts that they may be for us the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the holy body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may be one body in Christ, a living sacrifice to the praise of your glory. Remember, O Lord, your one holy Christian and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of Christ, Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her peace. Grant that we who wait for you here on earth may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor in your sight and now rest from their labor. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the light is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all.
Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, our Savior Jesus Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, our Savior Jesus Christ, the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of our Savior Jesus Christ. The body of Christ. Our Savior Jesus Christ. The body of Christ. Our Savior Jesus Christ. The body of our Savior Jesus Christ. The body of our Savior Jesus Christ. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting.
And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Let us go forth in peace. 